Hi, I'm Monique Shartina, and I'm a PhD student at Cardiff School of Mathematics. I will be presenting this paper on a heuristic algorithm for school bus routing with bus stop selection. This work has been um, performed in conjunction with my supervisors, who are Dr. Red Lewis and Dr. Jonathan Thompson. So um, uh, the outline of this presentation involves, um, first of all, I will give the motivation as to why we have decided to focus on the school bus routing problem. Then we'll move on into the problem definition, the algorithm description, some computational experiments that we have performed, and then um, I will end with some concluding remarks and future work. So, um, as you know, um, in several countries around the world, millions of funds are allocated yearly to provide school transportation to students. And this problem, the school bus routing problem, deals with using um, finding the optimal use of a fleet of vehicles to transport students to and from school in the morning or in the afternoon. Um, because of this, because millions of funds are allocated during each academic year, government administrators have to make sure that the service is efficient in terms of costs. And it must also guarantee that the service is effective as well, that it caters for the needs of all the students. And apart from that, we have to make sure that the service promotes positive well-being of students and fairness among students. For example, we cannot expect uh, young students, primary school students, to spend a lot of time on a bus. So we have to make sure that the routes are designed to be as short as possible. And so there are there is this trade-off between minimizing the total costs and maximizing service quality. So I will now move on to the problem definition. The school bus routing problem is most of the time modeled as a capacitated and typically time-constrained open vehicle routing problem, open because it starts from a bus depot most of the time and ends at the school or vice versa if it is the afternoon trip. And um, uh, Gazar Rosetta in 1981 have provided the decomposition of the school bus routing problem, which involves five subproblems: the data preparation phase, the bus stop selection phase, route generation, school bell time adjustment, and route scheduling. This um, presentation will deal with the first three subproblems, and we here focus on the single school school bus routing problem. So here, the solutions that we have achieved are for individual schools. And this is because in the locations that we have considered, mixed loads, that is students from different schools traveling on the same bus, are not allowed. That is why we focus on the single school bus routing problem. And here we also deal with the morning problem, whereby students have to be transferred from their homes to the schools. Obviously, a solution to the afternoon problem can be um, found by reversing the morning routes. These are some assumptions that we have been taken to be able to formulate the model into a mathematical model. So first of all, we have two vertex sets, V1 and V2. V1 is the vertex set that's representing the school location and the potential bus stops. Note that the um, locations of the bus stops and the schools are actual um, geographical locations. So these have been obtained from government um, governmental data. The vertex set V2 consists of student addresses. Due to confidentiality, we could not have been provided with information about the students. And so these have been generated randomly for each location considered. So as an example, um, here you have a real world um, map of Brisbane. The red dots are um, the bus stops and the green dot is the school that has been considered, whereas the yellow dots are the home addresses which have been generated randomly. Some other assumptions that we have done, uh, we have taken is, um, we have assumed that there is a maximum walking distance MW in kilometers that students are expected to walk to get to a bus stop. This changes depending on the location being considered. And also a minimum eligibility distance ME that is also in kilometers, which is the, dis the minimum distance that students are expected to walk um, for them to be to the school, for them to be eligible for school transportation. So, for example, in my home country, Malta, uh, students that live more than one kilometer away for the school are eligible for um, school transportation. In this paper, we assume that the um, fleet of buses is homogeneous and unlimited, and we assume a bus capacity C, which is again dependent on the location being solved. And for all the instances, we assume a maximum journey time MT of 45 minutes. So uh, the routes cannot be longer than that. And we also take the assumption of multi-stops. 
So here we assume that bus stops can be visited by more than one bus. So um, for example, um, if we have a bus stop which is very central in a city or in a location, there may be a lot of students who are walking to this bus stop and so the capacity may not be enough to cater for all these students and so we allow different routes to visit such bus stops. And uh, we also, um, uh, in order to calculate the bus journey times, um, we do this by a summation of the traveling times and the dwell times. Uh, the dwell times, so the dwell times at the different bus stops are calculated through this linear function and these, this is um, in seconds. So at each bus stop, we assume that the bus, the driver will take 15 seconds to stop the bus. And then after um, boarding the students merge into parallel traffic. And we also assume that, that each boarding students will take approximately five seconds to board the bus. Moving on to the objectives of our problem, we have um, objectives on three different levels. So on the primary level, we want to minimize the number of routes, the number of buses, because here we are assuming that each route will be performed by a different bus. And this is um, uh, this objective is on the primary level because obviously each bus has a certain operational cost. We have the bus, uh, the bus acquisition cost and the driver salary cost. So on, on the primary level, we want to minimize the number of routes. Then on the secondary level, we want to minimize the total student walking distance and the total route journey time. So these are treated on the same secondary level. And then on the tertiary level, we have another objective function that minimizes the discrepancy between the longest and the shortest routes in the solution. So as to guarantee that there is equity in the solution as well. So for example, if we find two different alternative solutions that have the same total route journey time, then we choose the one that has the lowest discrepancy between the longest and the shortest routes. I will now move on to the algorithm description. So the algorithm has several phases. First of all, we start off with constructing an initial solution and then later to try and improve this initial solution and to try to um, destroy and repair the solution to achieve alternative solutions. So with regards to the construction of the initial solution, the first step that we take is we try to identify the minimum number of buses required to cater for all the students in that instance being considered. And to do that, we just use this very simple equation where we divide the total number of students by the um, bus capacity C being taken for that instance. And we take the greatest integer that, uh, that is bigger than that value. And then having done that, we try and select an initial subset V1 prime of V1. Remember that V1 is the set of potential bus stops. And we try and choose an, an initial subset V1 prime in agreed, in agreed fashion, so as to guarantee that all the students have at least one bus stop within maximum walking distance. Having done that, we assign students to their closest bus stop in V1 prime, and this guarantees that we minimize the total walking distance. And then um, uh, once we assign the students to the, um, their closest bus stop, we construct the initial routes via parallel backward implementation of the nearest neighbor heuristic. Note that these initial routes may violate the maximum journey time MT. So in the initial um, phase, we um, drop the um, time limit, the route time limit constraint. We just um, make sure that the capacities are not exceeded. But um, and, and we do that because later on we are going to apply local search operators that will that may potentially um, shorten all the routes and make sure that the maximum journey time is then satisfied. And having obtained this initial solution, we calculate the total route journey time, which is the fitness value of this initial solution. Note that um, journey times that do exceed the maximum journey time and T are scaled up heavily by a, via a penalty. Having obtained an initial solution, then we move on to the local search routine. So in this step, we use improvement heuristics to improve the initial solution. And we try to shorten the initial routes via six different intra-route and inter-route local search operators. And I'm going to explain each one of these very briefly. And um, something that I want to point out is that at each iteration of this local search routine, we use the steepest descent approach. So we evaluate all the operations that are possible within the union of these six operators. And we perform the one that, that um, yields the highest improvement. 
So with regards to the interroute operators, these are operators that operate on a single route, whereas the interroute operators operate on a pair of routes. So let us go through all these operators. So first of all, the exchange operator, and here on the right hand side of the screen, you can see a visualization and example of each of the operators. So with regards to the exchange, remember interroute operators operate on a single route. And if you have a route like this that goes from A to G, from node A to node G, you would just take two nodes and exchange their position. So as you can see here, B and F are being replaced, exchanged. The two opt intraroute operator takes a subroute of, of one route in the solution and inverts it. So if we choose this subroute of four root nodes, then it will change, it will be inverted to DC, B, and A. The generalized or opt um, interroute operator takes a subroute and tries to move it somewhere else within the same route. So for example, we can take this subroute of three nodes and move it in a, in a better position, possibly also inverting the subroute if it leads to a better improvement. When it comes to the interroute operators, which operate on a pair of routes, the or exchange takes a subroute in one route and tries to move it somewhere else in the other route. So for example, we can choose the subroute BC and try to move it somewhere else within the second route, possibly again also inverting it if it leads to a better improvement. The cross exchange um, works with two subroutes, one in each route, and we try to swap them together, again, possibly inverting one or both of these subroutes if it leads to a better improvement. And finally, the creation of the multi-stops this is an operator which we have um, which we have developed ourselves. Since we are assuming that bus stops can be visited by more than one route, what we do in this operator is we take two different routes such that the first route exceeds the maximum journey time. So let's assume that this route A to G exceeds the four to five minutes time limit. The second route um, is not full, so there are some empty seats. Okay, what we do is we try and create a copy of one node into the second route and try and transfer some students from the appearance of the in the first route to the new appearance of the in the second route. And the reason why we do this is to hopefully try and decrease the journey time of the first route and to, for it to become less or equal to empty. And these, uh, these operators, so the steep as descent approach, continues until no further improvements exist in the union of this, these six interroute or interroute operators. Having done that, so having improved the initial solution by the local search routine, what we do is then we try to generate alternative solutions. So we have a kick operator that tries to alter the subset of bus stops. V1 prime, either by replacing some bus stops or by completely generating a new subset. Then having altered the subset of bus stops, which I will be explaining this step more in detail in the next slide, we reassign students to their closest bus stop in the new subset. We try to repair the solution to cater for the changes in the bus stops. So if some bus stops have been removed, we remove them from the solution. If some new bus stops have appeared in the subset, we try to incorporate them in the solution at the best position. We reapply the local search operators and we repeat this repair and improve procedure for a time limit of five minutes. And if within this time limit, no solution with all journey times satisfying the maximum journey time and T is found, then we restart the whole process. So we restart again from the construction of the initial solution with M plus one route. So we increase the number of routes and we continue doing this until we find a number of routes that for which there exists a feasible solution with all journey times being at most empty. With regards to this first step, Okay, we have four different variants of, of the algorithm, which differ in the way they alter the subset V1 prime of bus stops. So these are the four vari variants that we have considered. So in the first variant, we generate a new subset of bus stops V1 double prime from scratch. In the second variant, we generate a new subset of bus stops V1 double prime from the subset used in the previous iteration. In the third variant, we generate a new subset of bus stops from the most recent subset, V1 prime, that yields the current best solution with all 
journey time is being at most empty. And in the final variant of the algorithm, we generate the new subset via a trade-off between variance two and variance three. So we generate a random number. If this random number is less than 0.5, we, we will generate the new subset according to variance two. If this is greater or equal to 0.5, we generate it according to variance three. And uh, we have compared these three different variants and I will be presenting the results in the computational experiments section. So um, if we move on now to the computational experiments section, I will first give an overview of the data sets that we have performed experiments on. We have performed experiments on a total of 20 instances, which um, 10 of which are pertaining to Malta, which is my home country, and um, the other 10 pertain to the UK and Australia. The 10 instances pertaining to the UK and Australia have been extracted from another publication, which I'm going to give the reference on very, very shortly. These are, the third column gives the number of bus stops together with the school for each instance. The fourth column gives the number of addresses considered. The S column gives the total number of students in that instance. Remember that ME is the minim minimum eligible distance. MW is the maximum walking distance in kilometers. These, both these two parameters are in kilometers. And C is the capacity of, of the buses being considered. Remember that here we are assuming homogeneous fleets. So all the buses have the same capacity, either 40 or, or 70, depending on the location. Here are some results that we have achieved for the different um, locations. Um, Something that I must point out is that each variant was run 25 times on each instance. So each variant was run um, 25 times with a seat controlled um, run, which, which are independent of each other. Okay. The second column gives the number of routes of the best solution achieved. And um, uh, something that I want to point out is that for all instances except the Suffolk instance, the minimum number of buses was achieved. So we were, we were able to find feasible solutions using the minimum number of buses, but for Suffolk, an additional route was required. So instead of three routes, we had to use four routes because no feasible solution was found with three routes. These are the average number of iterations performed for each variant. These are the means plus or minus the standard deviation. As you can see clearly from this table, variant one, uh, remember that variant one was generating a new subset from scratch. Uh, you can see clearly that it is the slowest out of all the four variants. This is because obviously this variant does not use information from previous iterations. So it generates a new subset from scratch and reapplies the nearest neighbor constructive heuristic. So it is the slowest out of the four. The uh, one that performed the highest number of iterations on average was variant two, followed by variant four and variant three. These are some selected box, box plots for four instances. So here we have plotted the 100 total journey times achieved via um, the four variants. So 25 runs for each variant. As you can see from these box plots, the performance of the different variants is highly dependent on the input data. And you can also see that variants three and four, so variants three and four um, perform the best across all these four variants. And this was also evident in the remaining 16 instances, as you will see in the next statement. These are the best results that we have achieved for um, all the locations. So the values in this table represent the best total journey time, the minimal total journey time achieved from the 100 runs for each instance. Um, the values the values under each column is obviously the best total journey time at achieved from each variant. And the values in bold are the best across the four variants. So the ones that are in bold are the best across the four variants. And the number in brackets is the number of runs out of 25 that have managed to achieve that best total journey time. Something that I want to point out is that, um, as I said before, 10 instances were extracted from another publication, which is this paper here, for which one of my supervisors was uh, one of the authors. And um, here in the second column, I am also presenting the best results that have been presented in this paper. 
And as you can see, if you compare this column with the bold values in these four columns, you can see that for the majority out of these 10 instances, our algorithm has provided a better total root journey time than the one presented in this paper. Something else which is uh, very important to point out is that our algorithm has managed to achieve different subsets of bus stops that yield the same best total journey time for 10 out of 20 instances. So the number under this column, under the subsets column, gives the different number, the number of alternative subsets that yield, for example, this total journey time of 87.77 minutes. So for example, for the IMJAR instance, there are three different solutions that yield this 87.77 minutes total journey time. And this is very important because this is an extension to what has been done in this paper, um, where we um, have managed to achieve alternative solutions, not just one solution. Could this you go to the conclusion, please? Yes, yes, sure. This is um, an example of, of an optimal solution that was achieved for Brisbane. And these are the conclusions that we have, um, that we have achieved from this publication. Um, our problem involves several real world features, it provides high quality solutions in very short computational time. It copes with large scale instances. And as I said, it provides multiple subsets of bus stops yielding the best total journey time for 10 instances. And this is a very important point because government administrators can then lialize with bus operators uh, to choose the most appropriate subset of bus stops from the multiple subsets. To end this presentation, um, uh, I'm going to just give a final remark on the future work. Um, from the um, publication of this um, uh, work, we have managed to extend the algorithm to allow a limited heterogeneous fleet of buses. And now we are also currently working on addressing uncertainty in the traveling time. So changing from stochastic traveling times from deterministic traveling times to stochastic traveling times. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your pre nice presentation. So this is question time, please, if you have some questions. I will have me, ah, oh, Christine, yes. Hi, thank you very much. Um, you mentioned that Safran is kind of an outlier because you were not able to actually find the best solution there. Do you have an idea why that is? Um, uh, the Observations that we have done is that this is because this is a rural, rural based instance. And because of this, we, we didn't manage to find um, solutions with three routes. This was also evident in the paper that I presented the uh, reference for. So this was uh, okay. another solution for which the other authors have observed as well. Uh, okay, that, that, that is a very nice uh, lead into to the other question I had. So is the hypothesis that rural areas are more difficult to actually solve because most of the areas you had seem to be urban areas, but um, yes, exactly. yes. Okay, but that's a really interesting observation. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. I have a question. Um, uh, in your algorithm, there is a lot of um, elements in the algorithm. At first, it could be a sophisticated algorithm, which is nice for state-of-the-art alg algorithm. But do you know which, which is the key element of your algorithm that explains the, the, the performances? I think it's the destroy and repair mechanism. So the fact that we are um, changing the subset of bus stops and trying to repair the solution to cater for these changes, that is making a lot of improvement in the fitness value. So I believe this is the most, the, the, and, the key element. And have you studied uh, this part specifically of the algorithm with and without uh, to, to know? No, not yet, but that is a very good suggestion to do, yes. Yeah, and uh, maybe if, if I can, I have another question, quick question, but uh, uh, do you know which part of your algorithm can be improved? I think that um, we are now working more on the data preparation phase. So now what we are doing is um, for, for, the, um, for this publication, we're using Bing Maps to get the shortest um, traveling distances or, or times between the different nodes. 
What we are doing now is that we're using an OSNX Python library. Um, so that now what we're going to do is we're going to shift from deterministic traveling times to stochastic traveling times. And in that way, we would be able um, in a dynamic fashion to change routes if, for example, a road has a traffic jam or there is a traffic accident okay, okay. not accessible. So that I think will, will improve quite a lot the, the algorithm. Maybe you can use some simulator to, to simulate the things. Yes. Okay, 